Howdy folks and welcome to another salient process IBM BPM technical tutorial. In this edition we're going to look about we're going to look at debugging client side human services. So here's a backstory and again this is a real problem one I again encountered today that uh, needed exactly this. So imagine I have a client side human services no special coach views, just the default ones out of the box. And what I want to do is I want to have a button on the screen where when I click on that button, it generates a random number. So to do this, I created a advanced uh, custom HTML and in the advanced custom HTML, I placed a little piece of code. I placed code in here which defined a function called generate random and then when I run that function, it generates a random number and pops it up in an alert. Remember, this is just illustrative. So if I save this, if I run it, we end up with a code, a uh, coach, generate random, and it pops up a dialogue with my new randomly generated number. Great, everything is working. Now because this is illustrative and not my real problem, in my real problem I didn't get my code right. That's not unusual for me. And in my code it was failing, it was crashing, oh horrible things were happening in my code. So what I needed to do was I needed to insert a debugging statement. So I inserted the JavaScript debugger statement, great, I saved it, I ran my client-side human service, here's my client-side human service, in my Chrome browser I hit Control shift i to bring up my Chrome debugger, great, here's my Chrome debugger, and now I hit my generate random, boom! And we break into the client site, we break into the code, and nothing. There is no code. The debugger is invoked, but where am I? There is nothing to see. The Chrome debugger, nor the Firefox debugger, nor any of the other debuggers showed me my code. Oh no, that's no good. So let me run it again. Uh, it's obviously running. Bring up my debugger. There's just nothing there. There's no breakpoint. There's no. There's nothing to show where I am in my code. Hmm, that's not very good. So what I did was I googled around and I found out that there is a concept called debugging dynamically loaded JavaScript. So what this makes me think is that in the client side human service, the content of the JavaScript that is being loaded through my custom HTML is inline JavaScript and there's no way to figure out what source file it is. But apparently there's a magic tag and I call it magic. It's slash slash pound source URL equals a file name. And watch what happens when we inject that into our client-side human service code. So you put it in as the last comment in your source function and this has the effect of declaring, because it's not actual, but declaring that this function which is about to be executed exists in a logical file name, in this case called filename.js. Let's change that, let's call that neil.js. So now let's rerun this. We're running it again all I've done is added this meta tag slash slash is a comment. If we now come over here, I hit my generate random and now look what has happened. Here is my source code. It's in this fictitious file called neil.js, but I can now step through and place breakpoints. So let's place a breakpoint here. I can now step through its execution. It runs. If I run it again, I've broken up in my, my specific uh, breakpoint. So I have full source access inside my client side human service in this unnamed no domain virtual source file which was identified because I placed a magic tag and that's the only way I can describe it a magic tag in my source which was slash slash pound and that is apparently interpreted by the JavaScript interpreter slash compiler and lets me meta add the source URL that this source code should logically pertain to. 
and it works gorgeously. So now when I run my client-side human service, which invokes inlined JavaScript, we get to see where we are by virtue of the fact that we associate it with a logical source file. So again, a nice quick tip, but for me it saved my bacon, and I really want to remember this little trick in the future. Again, the core of this is the magic slash slash pound source URL equals and then a logical file name. I hope you found this useful. I look forward to making more of these videos in the future. Thanks guys and bye for now.